Yeah, hi folks. This is Martin from photoacademy.eu and this is a video tutorial about one of my workflows of the new Corel Aftershot Pro RAW converter and with this image I show you a workflow that I use very often for black and white and I start with the layer panel. I create a new adjustment layer and go into the detail panel. I don't use Corel's raw or sharpening module. I only use my noise ninja. I like it a little bit more. Enable it. Go down with the Luma and the Chroma noise. Jump into 100%, the one-on-one -on -one view. <clears throat> and we don't have a lot of noise here, so we can start with the sharpening that is built into the noise ninja. And I go up a little bit to an amount that I like and I'm thinking of printing so I want to print this image and I mostly use a little bit too much because I can change the opacity of this sharpening layer <coughs> and then we can take a look if there is a little bit noise after sharpening then we can go into the chroma noise reduction first and then to the luma I think something like this is okay for the image a little bit later on we will go into a plugin and there we create an old film grain. Yeah, this is good for me for the sharpening. Next, we have a moon over here. I'll go back to the 101. And I don't like this. So we take a heal and clone function and get rid of the moon. Great, very fast and easy. We have the moon and it's gone. Yeah, then uh, we take another adjustment layer and I call this color. So we jump right into the color panel and here I go up with the vibrance and a little bit more, a little bit of a saturation. I think I can cool down the whole image a little bit. I guess a shot. And here I'm thinking the black and white. The sliders I will use after this normal raw, after the normal, normal raw adjustments. I think a little bit more black and white and there's not much more I can change and I can create another adjustment layer it's all about the contrast and here 
take a look on my histogram and what the image looks like. I go up with the exposure a little bit. Bring back the blacks so they, that I have rich black tones for my black and white. A little bit too much, it's better than nothing. And there's no need for fill light or the highlight correction. But soon we will use this, maybe. Because I want to use a curve. And this curve I don't adjust by hand. I will use my eyedropper tools for this. It's enough to begin with for the black and white. And here I'm looking for an area that is already blown out or very close to it. I think this area will be good to set a white point. And then we can search for a black area to set the black eyedropper there. And I think this area might help me bring down the blacks. And for the midtones, I use something over here. And take a look. Yeah. I like this for for my black and white. That's all I need for the black and white. And then we can go back to our contrast and maybe adjust the highlight just just the hair for black and white that we have a little bit of a gap here. It's much easier for the black and white conversion. It's that we also can do here in the raw converter. And we call this layer black and white. Go into the plugin panel. Enable the black and white and here I use, I think I will use the blue channel to take a look what the other will do for us. The red is good as well. Down to the blue. I think I like the red a little bit more. And what's great on this raw converter is you can immediately see what's going on with the mouse over. So I can jump from one to another filter and I can see what's going on in my image immediately. That's great. I think the red blue minimum can help us a lot. Back to the red. Red minimum. I think the red blue minimum is a little bit better, a little bit richer in the black tones. That's what I want to have. Yeah. It's, it's much better for me. So I will use it. And that's enough to begin with. And the next adjustment layer will be the 
in the adding that we also have here in the plugin panel. It's a new plugin. You can see this on our page. I already shown this plugin. It's a separate installation. And we go into it. Start with my normal options. Down with the strength. Then change the size and the transition to something I like. Set the midpoint to an area I want to have it to. Can change the ratio a little bit for this special image. And then we can go back with the strength to an amount that's okay for us. Something like this, I think. And for me, the before and after of this vignetting. Yeah, I think this is good. And here we have our black and white image. And as I said earlier, I will go into another plugin. But this is not part of this particular video. I will show it on the upcoming video. For this and today, it's only the raw conversion, the workflow in Coral Aftershot Pro from start to end for a black and white image. Yeah, this is it for me. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.